The Raiders now had a choice of two plans. They could fence and parry to protect their lead, or they could attack to destroy and demolish. The San Diego Chargers. While their offense flew on the wings of Mercury, their defensive line struck with the hammer of Thor. The young knights and the old warriors carved a battlefield in the sky. He doesn't swear, smoke, drink, or spit. His favorite beverage is milk. His favorite movie is The Sound of Music. And his middle name is Herbert. George Allen is so square, says a rival coach, that you could roll him on a Las Vegas craps table. Yet George Allen is a man for his time and certainly a man for his place. For three years, Blander waited on the sidelines. An old soldier, supposedly too ancient for battle, but too stubborn to fade away. Doug Atkins was like a storm rolling over a Kansas farmhouse. He came from all directions, and all there was to do was to tie down what you could and hope he didn't take the roof. Men of magic, men of muscle, the men of Notre Dame. Wake up the echoes, cheering their name. When John had a horse he could ride, he was at his best coming down the home stretch. No one could ring down the final curtain or raise a goose bump like John Facenda. Here are a few of his most famous final lines. Beneath a giant birch tree, where Father Soren once sat smoking a peace pipe with the Indians, rest the bones of Newt Rockne. His spirit has yet to be buried. Two teams have gained a champion's fame. Two teams of men both skilled and game. Men who have battled as brothers through combat thick and thin. And now they confront each other for a prize only one can win. And here are the closing lines of the last script that John Facenda ever read for NFL films. In Super Bowl 18, the Raiders again scaled the heights of football greatness and stood alone on the summit. A team of young men filled with promise and old veterans filled with pride. Raiders are an honor to the team's glorious past and the world champions of pro football's present. For everyone. And it's Lombardi, raging at defeat and vowing never to lose another championship game, then driving his team to make the promise come true. In the world of pro football, there was no one that John Facenda admired more than Vince Lombardi. They both demonstrated a passion and a pride in their work, and they both carried themselves with the same kind of class and dignity. Here's a feature that we produced about Lombardi, and I'm sure you'll agree that the legendary coach and the legendary voice were a perfect union. Lombardi. Certain magic still lingers in the very name. 
it speaks of jewels in the snow and cold November mud. Nine years, Lombardi coached the Green Bay Packers. He drove them to five NFL championships and victories in the first two Super Bowls. His game plans contained a minimum of simple plays executed with a maximum of effort. If you look at this play, what we're trying to get is a seal here and a seal here and try to run this play in the alley. What the hell's going on out here? Everybody's grabbing out there. Nobody's tackling. Just grabbing, everybody. Put your shoulders in there out there. Beneath his stormy surface flowed the warm tide of compassion and kindness. I, I know I'm an emotional man. In order for me, for example, to give everything of myself, uh, to take the mental anguish that's all part of this game, the emotionalism that's all part of this game, in order for me to do this for someone else, I think there has to be a certain amount of love for that other person. There's love for each other, in other words, in the game of football. Lombardi believed in the old-fashioned virtues, which were stamped all over his teams. Hard work, second effort, loyalty, and love. His genius was that he was able to inspire so many of his players to grasp these ideals. Lombardi's influence extended not only to his own team, but during his short career as head coach, many hundreds of thousands of other young athletes warmed their own competitive spirits by the bright fire of this man who stood for everything that was solid and successful in American sports. He remains for many the very heart of pro football pumping hard right now. Every year, the winner of the Super Bowl is awarded the Vincent Lombardi Trophy. His legacy is the greatest prize the game can offer. I'm Ian Hayward. I'm used to challenges. This fall on Sunday night. After beating the Russians in the first round, Team USA is back for more. Andre Agassi. The Packers are inspired, lusty, young, and eager. The championships are won by veterans, experienced, dogged fighters who know the dry mouth of pressure. There's an old saying. The eyes are the windows of the soul. In John Facenda's case, that saying could be modified to, the voice is the passageway to the heart. John reached the hearts of millions with a voice that will forever be associated with the drama and excitement of pro football. The legends of the game truly came alive when their deeds were recounted by the legendary voice of John Facenda.
Great heroes need great sorrows and burdens, or half their greatness goes unnoticed. Uh, Sir Walter Scott uh, wasn't thinking about the NFL when he wrote those words, but nowhere can stories of struggle and reward be found more frequently than in the National Football League. After all, football uh, is a game of continuous ebb and flow where almost every player, coach, and fan has felt both great sorrow and joy, sometimes in the course of a single game. The history of the NFL is made up of all kinds of stories, but few cover the ups and downs of playing the game like these tales of high times and hard times. Experiencing an unparalleled season, Larry Ball endured an uncertain summer camp. Coming in as a rookie, didn't know what the odds were of them needing any other players or making any changes. They had, they had been to the Super Bowl the year before and lost to Dallas. So it was a, kind of a tension-filled summer, and ended up three of us stuck around. It was uh, myself, Charlie Babb, and uh, Mike Kadish. There were times maybe my only contribution might have been a couple of tackles on the punt team or kickoff team. But in that game, that might have been something that helped us win one of those games. They're part of a, a great team when they mention uh, Bob Greasy and Zonka and Bonacani and Manny Fernandez and all the names. You know, they may not remember your name, but you can walk with your head high. You were part of that. You're part of history. Ball went on to play for another history-making squad, the 1976 Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Ball wore number 53, but all the Bucs wound up wearing zero. Pat Toomey was my roommate the first weekend. He told me that he didn't think we'd win a game when I was... I thought he was just joking. The joke was on the Bucks, as they lost all 14 games on their schedule and made Ball the only player in NFL annals to experience both a season without victory and a season without defeat. While this expansion team didn't pack much punch, caustic head coach John McKay always seemed to be packing a punch line. You can't stop a pass or a run. Otherwise, we're in great shape. Hey, what's you? What's wrong with playing Mon in the game? Uh, he tackles, huh? We got all these old pros. Nobody tackles. Trying to get the ball to keep it about a week. Uh, how the hell are you going to get him off the back? Well, these guys are almost gutless. Man, the ones that aren't that are brainless. We got uh, had to scramble out of there quite a bit. A lot of sacks. Uh, well, we didn't block him, no. but we made up for it by not tackling. He had a certain type of humor that he would put out. I think that was his defense mechanism against uh, losing. I'm sure he suffered through the season as much as anyone. Week after week, it was uh, frustration, uh, grasping at straws, wondering what you could do to make a, make a little difference here that might just make a play go just one way that would help us win. You have to go through the experience of losing and losing and being frustrated and being on the other end and having people, you know, pointing fingers at you or looking at you that way. It will teach you how to be resilient. It will teach you to have thick skin. And uh, people who go through things like that, I think, it, you know, if they handle it correctly, they can learn to bounce back from it and be stronger for it. Ball now teaches kids how to bounce back as a guidance counselor and assistant coach at Miami Southwest High School. His teams have been more like the 76 Buccaneers than the 72 Dolphins. Working with, with high school kids now, I'm in an environment where the history of this particular place has never been strong in football. Years and years and years of losing seasons. The frustration of losing so often occasionally makes Ball adapt the tone of John McKay. The sarcastic humor, sometimes that's the, that's the only way you can help battle it. RJ. Don't hit our own player here. This is warm up. Does the term illegal procedure hit you anywhere? Does the term illegal procedure hit you anywhere? You're off the line. Both wideouts are on the No, both wideouts are on the line on spread. When they make the mistake, you're upset with them. But they didn't go out there planning to make the mistake. 15, 16, 17 year old boys going out playing football, their idea is not to go out there and make a mistake that's going to hurt the team. They're trying to do their best. Might be my imagination. Might be the weather. Might be something. Maybe you're just concentrating, but. We seem just a little flat, so when you hit the field, you can't be that way. 
although you're coaching it, not actually playing it, you still don't like to lose. It's still a contest. It's, it's like a chess game. You're trying to get your players to do something that can counterbalance whatever the other team is doing. That crossing pattern wasn't just the linebacker's fault. He started to come up till he got outside. If he doesn't get outside, linebacker picks up that tight end coming across. In a recent contest, Southwest was beaten by a more powerful crosstown rival. Throw it, Doug, throw it. Jesus, Doug, throw it. Call timeout. Are you on the phone? Is anybody on the phone? Larry Ball occupies a unique place in NFL history and possesses a unique perspective on winning and losing. He shares that perspective with the kids at Southwest High. You know what they're going through, and you can tell them, listen, this has nothing to do with you as a person. You have to let them know that they, you know, they gave you a good effort. At the end of the game, if it was a hard-fought battle, and you know you did everything you could, then you walk off with your head up high. I stay in touch with the kids that are in, in college and playing. When they come back, you know, it's like they're successful, but I feel successful because of the fact that I feel like I was a part of that success. And I like to know when they come back and, and they've done well, then I know that somewhere along the line, maybe, maybe something we did helped make them what they're doing now. Big pass, it's, it's not this, it's not that. Against the St. Louis Cardinals, I remember we uh, beat the Cardinals one year, 51-42. He and Charlie Johnson threw six touchdowns apiece. It wasn't very pretty balls, but a lot of touchdowns involved in those arms. He had some great games, but.